Hello, my name is Dr. Rebecca Gee, obstetrician gynecologist and on faculty at Louisiana State University at the School of Public Health and the School of Medicine. I'm delighted to be the editor of this special edition of Current Opinion in Obstetrics and Gynecology, Healthcare Management Strategies. You know, uh, the healthcare environment is changing more rapidly than ever before. Uh, in 1965, when Medicare and Medicaid were enacted, uh, a sea change happened in how Americans access their healthcare services. Uh, now today, and in relationship to the Affordable Care Act, more Americans are having access to health insurance, but also more challenges um, as we navigate this new healthcare law uh, and its implementation than ever before. Uh, in that regard, uh, we need new types of leaders, ones who understand uh, the problems of healthcare, not just in terms of the clinical enterprise, but in terms of the healthcare economics, the payment systems, the healthcare disparities, the social and cultural environment uh, in which we live. Um, and to do that requires training. Um, one of the programs that has been seminal in the development of physician leaders who are non-traditional and understand the health system is called the Robert Wood Johnson Clinical Scholars Program. That program started in 1972, has trained over a thousand scholars, uh, with over 40 of them obstetricians, gynecologists, myself included. Um, this program has led to a, a disruptive innovator uh, portfolio and many obstetrician gynecologists who have gone around the country. These programs have been uh, in several states around the nation, including Washington State, um, Northwestern, uh, Johns Hopkins, University of Pennsylvania, University of California at Los Angeles and Michigan, uh, among others. Um, and the folks who have trained in these programs have then uh, become innovators in um, science and technology and in the clinical enterprise, but also in non-traditional areas um, like um, my role, which is Medicaid medical director, in addition to my faculty role, or others who were heads of um, different um, areas at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, or on faculty teaching um, students and residents about healthcare policy, or being healthcare uh, uh, effectiveness researchers or healthcare uh, services researchers. So this program has been very powerful, and in this edition, we're highlighting several of the uh, former clinical scholars or current clin clinical scholars who are obstetrician gynecologists. Um, to start with, Nate Danicola at my former program, Penn, um, is writing about the use of social media in obstetrics and gynecology and how ACOG um, and other professional organizations have used social media uh, to communicate with both physicians and patients. Uh, Lori Zephrin, a former colleague from residency, writes about how the Veterans Affairs Administration uh, system uh, is one of our nation's largest that comprises over a thousand hospitals and 150 um, I'm sorry, 1,000 clinics and 150 hospitals nationwide, writes about how women's health and reproductive services are being uh, engaged in in a new way. Elizabeth Kranz uh, from Michigan writes about the Strong Start program for mothers and newborns, a new effort and approach by CMS to look at the quality of care that's delivered to pregnant moms, including advocating for uh, the Centering Pregnancy Model and Maternity Medical Homes. Um, in the area of leadership, Aaron Salibi and colleagues have shown uh, uh, how their work in Los Angeles with, that has engaged community leaders um, to assist health systems to re redesign care delivery have been so successful and some of that based on uh, clinical scholars training that was received. Uh, Bronson Tucker Edmonds, who trained at Penn, reviews uh, the academic research and shared decision, decision making in healthcare and how important it is to bring patients into a shared conversation about treatment options, particularly in many areas of obstetrics and gynecology where the evidence isn't clear and we don't have the randomized controlled trial to tell us exactly um, where to direct that patient. Pooja Mehta discusses, uh, from Penn, discusses the importance of uh, health care disparities and the opportunities that we have through the Affordable Care Act to address some of these in a, in a new way. In a provocative piece, Lisa Harris, uh, trained at Michigan, writes with a colleague about how reproductive freedom has been stratified and, um, and, and valued differently in the context of skin color and race. Um, finally, two cl clinical scholars who are current, uh, Michelle Meniz and Elizabeth Patton, both in Michigan, uh, write about uh, the impact of this program, uh, along with myself, um, uh, and sorry, uh, me at graduate from Penn, and how important it has been in training um, the future um, leaders in obstetrics and gynecology. Um, I hope that you will enjoy this piece. Uh, this clinical scholars program is being retired in 2017, so it's unclear at this point what 
types of training opportunities will take over, but I'm challenging uh, foundations uh, and others, academic institutions, to think about um, what it takes to train the obstetricians for the future that will help make uh, solve tomorrow's problems. So thank you so much.